Hallelujah. Now you get the older Denzel this morning. Hallelujah. Let me know God is good in this place. Hallelujah. That was a good word, amen? And it's so true. Because if you don't burn that bridge, you use it again. And again and again. And that's why people that are your age, someday will be my age. And 30 or 40 years will pass them by and they've done nothing for God. You know, I always make people angry because I tell the truth. And I'll go to churches and I'll see guys that got saved when I got saved 36 years ago. And I say, hey, how long have you been here? They go, oh, I've been here about six months. I'm here helping the pastor. Really? He started without you. But they, they are lying to themselves and their whole life They've never, they've never put their hand to the plow. They keep looking back. So God has never really used them to the fullest. And 30 years later, oh, they're saved, but they're ineffective and they're doing nothing for the Lord. And I sat here last night, you know, and then again this morning, and I look across you guys and I go, I know I mentioned last night I'm, I'm going to be 60, and I, I pray another 25 years of ministry, 20, 25 years. And I was thinking this morning, even greater than the blessing opportunity to preach another 20, 25 years, but to see some of you in 20, 25 years. Pastoring churches, come on. Being married to pastors, missionaries, people touching the world for Jesus, amen? And this is what it's all about. It's just getting saved and staying saved. Can you say amen? It's not enough to get saved, you gotta stay saved. You got to stay saved. So if you have your Bibles, go with me this morning to the book of Philippians, chapter 4, verse 13. I'm only going to use one scripture. Last night we talked about that you are the breakthrough generation. Amen. You are the generation of demonstration. Can you say amen? We talked last night that God wants you to be used by him to bring forth miracles in people's lives. God wants to use you Amen. To have that testimony that God can and still heal lives in Jesus' name. Amen. And so, but you have to learn to develop yourself as he was talking through the word, through prayer, and just continual church and build up into who God has called you to be. I want to minister this morning a message if you're taking notes again. It's called Success Comes in Cans. Success Comes in Cans and the Bible says in Philippians 4.13. I can do all things through Christ who strengtheneth me. Amen. I can do all things. Not some things, but I may know you can do anything Amen. if God is with you. Why? Because if God be for you, who can be against you? So if God be on my side, who shall I fear? Come on now. So it's critical to leave this place today, to leave this conference today with a greater confidence in yourself. Can you say amen? Yes. Not just in God, but a greater confidence in yourself knowing. And in, like I said last night, learn to prophesy to yourself, I can do all things through Christ. Amen. I can do all things. And someone who is immature or, or is ready to judge you say, well, isn't that self-centered? No. No, it's not because the Bible says so. The Bible tells me that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. The Bible says in Psalm 60 verse 12, through God, we shall do valiantly, for it is he that shall tread down our enemies. Through God, can you say amen? amen? Through God, I can do valiantly. I can be a valiant man, a valiant woman of God. I can be victorious. I can be a warrior. I can be lethal. Come on now. I can be powerful. Come on, somebody. And it may sound self-centered, but, but it's not. It's the real truth of the reality of knowing who you are and God. Knowing that it's not you that's being valiant, it's the God inside of you. Come on now. That death, hell, and the grave couldn't hold. That same God that raised from the dead dwells in you this morning. And so, come on, if God can raise him from the dead, he can lift you up too. Put you in ministry and use your life for something so powerful you could never imagine. I don't know what state this happened, but a while back, a couple of months ago, I was on, on the internet and I saw a revival happening in another state again, I don't know where. You know what happened? They were at a football game. 
And a group of young Christians like you decided just to start praising God. You know what happened? Heaven came down. And revival took place. Next thing you know, the whole state is in revival because some young people decided they weren't going to be ashamed of the gospel. Amen. But how many know it? it took courage to decide to say, let's sing. Don't you know there's a couple that said, right here? No, they're going to laugh at us. It took someone with courage to say, so what? Let's do it anyway. And what happened? Because they got out of the boat, they stepped out in faith, God honored their faith. And God showed up and he tread down the enemy for them. Daniel 11, 32 says, but the people that do know their God shall be strong and do exploits. Come on now. You know what an exploit is? An exploit is a daring act. Something, man, that's so daring that blows people's minds and it makes them scratch their head and go, how did you do that? Come on now. How did you do that? Because I know my God. Come on now. I know the God that I serve. I know that if God be for me, who can be against me? I know. I know that hell is going to come against my life. You hear you just got saved. Yeah, it's a tough battle. But when you begin to know your God through prayer and through the word of God, you begin to know that your God is amazing. Come on now. Yes. Your God is awesome. Yes. Brother Darnese was preaching, everything you need, God has it for you. Yes. You're sick, he's your healer. Come on now. Yes. You need money, he's your provider. Come on somebody. He can do anything for you. All you have to do is what? Ask. And then wait on the Lord. Just wait on God. But continue to praise Him while you're waiting. And know that God has such a tremendous future for you. The Bible says in Matthew 17, 20, And Jesus said unto them, Because of your unbelief, for verily I say unto you, If you have faith as a grain of a mustard seed, you shall say unto this mountain, Remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible for you. Come on now. Nothing shall be impossible for you. Nothing shall be impossible for you. Nothing shall be impossible for you. You know, it's, it's interesting how we can always believe nothing is impossible for her or for him or for them. But we can never believe that nothing is impossible for me. We can never come to a place in life where we say, you know, well, I, we always have the attitude, well, I can't do that. Well, I've never done that before. Okay, well, try it then. How about trying? Come on now. How about trying? Like my son Nico, he is, he's with me today, he's 13. And ever since he started school from kindergarten, every day, every day, I pick him up from school. And every day he said the same thing when he got in the car. What's up, Pops? What's for lunch? <laughs> so we'd go eat, whether it was Mickey D's, Jack in the Crack, wherever we ended up. <laughs> but then one day when he was about maybe 10 or so, when my soda was empty, I said, Look it up. He looked at me and I said, don't look at me like that. I've been getting you soda for 10 years, old boy. It's your turn now. I ain't ever getting up again in Jesus' name. And now I don't even say nothing. I just tap on my cup. Hit it. But see, we never want to come to a place where it's time for us to grow up. Mark Twain said, don't ever learn how to do anything and people will always do it for you. And we live in a generation of people that don't want to do anything. Come on now. See, I gave you these scriptures and I'm trying to lay just a quick, quick foundation that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Come on now. So at the end of the day, like Brother Arnice was saying, we have no excuse not to be successful in the kingdom of God and in this life. We have no excuse not to be blessed. No excuse at all. The reason we're not blessed is because we don't want to put the effort in. You don't want to try hard enough. Come on now. There's a saying that says, what you can become depends on what you can overcome. Now listen to that. What you can become and what you can become and what you can become will depend on what you can overcome. It won't depend on what they can overcome or what they can overcome. It's going to depend on what you can overcome. You know, the Bible says in John 10, 10, the devil cometh to kill, steal, and destroy. Jesus said, but I've come that you might have abundance. 
You know, if you read it carefully, it doesn't say the devil came to kill, to destroy. And Jesus said, and I guarantee you blessings. I guarantee you abundance. I guarantee you success. No, you know what he said? I come that you might have it. You know why? Because he says, I've made everything possible for you, but you got to do it yourself. And if you don't want it, see, we live in a world where people think that God feels sorry for us and he's begging us to do stuff. Come on now. You don't want to do it, don't do it. You don't even, you didn't, maybe you need to pray for me a little bit today. Come on now. Because sometimes I don't have the patience I used to have. Because somehow people think that staying saved is easy. Sometimes people think serving God is easy. I mean, it was hard. I went to go pick up a, a friend of mine from his house for church, a worship leader. And he had a guy, he goes, oh, I'm not there, but a buddy of mine will be there. You know, he's staying at the men's home. He's staying with me for a couple of days. So I go in there, and he's about my age. I say, hey, what's up, dude? Well, mine's Pastor Rudy. He goes, oh, Brother John, and what's up, man? I go, so how long have you been saved? He goes, oh, you know, it's a couple of months, but it's hard. I go, okay. What's so hard so I understand so I can help other people when I preach? He goes, well, you know, it's hard, you know, you know stopping this and stopping that. I go, well, then don't stop. Yeah. Don't stop. And you can get your food out of a trash can. Yes. As I drive past you on my way to Red Lobster. <laughs> I don't care what you do. He said, I don't like the way you're talking to me. I said, I don't care what you like. Huh? I go, I don't know what world you're living in where you think that I'm supposed to feel sorry for you when you're a man just like me? You can work just like I work? What's wrong with you? I said, man, I, I you know, I go to the laundromat when I was young because I didn't have no wash and dry. And I didn't want my wife to get up, so I'd get up at five in the morning. I had three boys, and I'd go to the laundromat, and I'd have some homeless cat come up to me and tell me, hey, man, can I have some money? And I'd look at them, and I'd say, well, let's get this straight so we're not confused because I don't want to be in a confusion. Okay? You want me to work 60 hours a week and drive a truck and break my back so I can cash my check and come here on Saturday and give you money so you can get high. Is that the plan? Is that the plan? So I understand. Well, I go, well, let me tell you what the plan is going to be. I'm going to give you about 10 seconds to run as fast as you can. Because if you don't run, I'm going to hurt you so bad you ain't going to be able to walk for days. Come on now. And in Jesus' name, by the grace of God, they ran away. But you see, sometimes I have compassion. Sometimes I don't because sometimes people, all they want is pity. Yeah. Did you know some people like being sick or pretending they're sick so that you can take care of them all the time? Oh, let me kiss you a ball ball. Get away from me. No, man. you got to toughen up, can you say it, man? Walt Disney said this, the way to get started is to quit talking and start doing. Yeah. Too many people talk about, oh man, one of the days I want to do this for God. Yet yeah, before you know it, you'll be my age. Yeah. And you'll do nothing. How about quit talking and start doing? Yeah. Don't talk about it. Come on now, just go do it. James 2, 17 and 18 says, even so faith, if it had not works, is dead, being alone. Yea, a man may say, thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show thee my faith by my works. Yes. Quit saying you believe God, and prove you believe God. Can you say amen? amen? Don't say you believe. Prove it. Prove it. And as you prove it, God will bless your life. Come on now. God is awesome. Can you say Amen. Yes. But he's had it already with lip service. And he wants action from you. Come on now. And he's tired of our excuses. In Exodus chapter 4 verse 1, God tells Moses to go set the people free. And you know what he says? The first thing he says, and Moses answered and said, But behold, they will not believe me, nor will they hearken unto my voice. God's telling you what to do. And instead of saying, yes, sir, right away, sir, I'm going to handle it. You know what he says? Well, they ain't going to listen to me. They ain't going to believe me. I ain't going. Because he, for some reason, he thinks just by making an excuse, God is going to say, okay, then I need somebody else. See, when I had, I drove a truck for 30 years. I was blessed to work at a meat company for 10 years. I eat steak every day, thank you, Jesus. 
And I used to make these guys work and tell them, if you don't want to work, that's fine. Go home. I'm telling you, I'm the supervisor of this plant right now. And if I ask you to do something twice, you ain't got a job. Put it this way. You a man, act like one. So let me tell you, because I'm only going to tell you once. The day I do your job, you ain't got a job. Because why am I doing your job and you're getting paid? Come on now. I'm going to do your job for you. And I was gracious, man. I took them upstairs where my boss had all these cameras. And I said, look, I could get fired for bringing you up here. But I want to show you guys, man, because I respect you guys. I don't talk to hear myself talk. There's cameras in here. My boss will come in here and he sits in here. He just sits here. And all he does is look at the cameras. And when he sees you not working, he'll call me, Rudy, to the front office, Rudy, to the front office. And I go, what's going on? He says, that guy there. Yeah? I didn't know I hired him to do nothing. It, it, what does his job description say? Nothing, because that's what he's doing. Wow, I didn't know I was in the business of giving my money away. I tell you what, why don't you do us all a favor, go get his time card, punch him out because he don't work here no more. Well, obviously he don't want to work, come on now. See, we live in a generation of people that, that don't want to work. You want everything given to you. Come on now. You don't want to work. Nothing but excuses. Um, uh. In that Exodus 4.10, the Lord tells him again to go. I will be with you. You tell him I am the I am sent you. Come on now. But still ain't enough. He's got to find another reason why I can't do it. And Moses says unto the Lord, oh my Lord, I'm not eloquent. Neither, therefore, nor since thou hast spoken unto thy servant, but I am slow of speech and I have a slow tongue. And you know darn well, he faked it even more. He started stuttering. Oh, you can't do it. Why don't your stuttering lips just tell the truth and say you don't want to do it? Because that's the truth of a lot of people. You can do it. You know why? Because God's not a liar. And if God says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, that means I can do it. Don't sit here and say, I can't do it. Come on now. Brother Darnese said, man, one of my biggest fears is standing up here and talking to you. But I can do it. I can do it. How is he doing it? Through the one that's given him the strength. Through the one who's given him the courage. Through the one who's given him the power. Come on. I can do it. We talked about it last night. When was the last time you stood out on a bus bench with a bullhorn and preached? How many of you remember the first time they put a bullhorn in your hand? Yes. And if they haven't, you need to get one. Yes. Ain't nothing more will set you on fire, get your nerves going crazy, than to stand up there and preach. Yes. Come on now. Yes. It'll, it'll change your world. You begin to realize, man, this is, come on, this is exciting. Yes. I tell you, man, I love the Lord. I love outreach. Yes. You know, you just don't outreach. You just don't go out there and, you know, you go out there armed and dangerous. You go out there walking, talking to yourself. Can you say amen? Come on, all the scriptures you've ever read come to life right now for what I need right now. You're walking, you're praying, you're talking to yourself. And you're saying, come on, man, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Come on. Because Paul said, God didn't send me to baptize, but to preach the gospel. I ain't no baptizer, I'm a preacher. Come on now. I'm going to preach today in the streets. And if someone laughs at me and tells me, shut up, fool. I'll say, you know, my Bible says it please God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. Yes. I may be a fool for Jesus, but whose fool are you? I'd rather be a fool for God than a fool for the devil any day. But we make excuses why we can't hit the streets. Well, I, I, can't, I can't do that. I'm nervous. You know? Well, then just start at least passing out flyers. Come on now. Man, that flyer, all that flyer does is open the door for conversation. It says, here, I just want to invite you to our service. Come on now. That's all you have to say. You know, and if, if God is gracious, man, and they say, well, what's it all about? Then God all of a sudden, yeah, fear will hit you, but you'll push past that. Oh, well, we're going to be having the stuff for the youth, and if you've got any kids, bring them. Come on now. 
We just want to invite you because God is real. God is doing things before you know it. All of a sudden, because you started, the Holy Ghost will move you out of the way. And he'll start speaking through you. Before you know it, you'll be preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. Next thing you know, you'll end that conversation by asking them, would you like to give your life to Jesus? Would you like to give your life to Jesus? I think of Brother Richie who's ushering today, how he went on a missionary trip to Mexico. Don't speak a lick of Spanish. But he went to Mexico anyhow, passing out tracks. Come on now. He could have said, I don't, I'm not even going to go, Pastor, because what good am I going to go? I don't speak no Spanish. All I know is tacos and enchiladas, that's it. I don't know nothing else, chimichangas. I don't know nothing. I, don't, I can't carry a conversation, Pastor. I would be wasting my time. I don't want to go. He could have made every excuse imaginable, like Moses, but instead he said, I'm there. I'm there. I don't speak Spanish, but I'm there. And I guarantee you, if you get a chance to talk to him, he'll tell you he'll never forget what God did for him. It changed his life, can you say amen? Because he simply what? Just try it. All you got to do is try. But no one wants to try these days. We live in a world of electronics, man, where you don't even want... Do you know they're going to stop teaching cursive writing in the schools? Because everything is done with a computer. Now you even got to write your name with one. Just type it in. We live in a world now where people make excuses. Are you working? No, not right now. I don't have a computer. Well, how about, get, you got feet? Go walking. I know that a lot of places don't take applications anymore. I know, I'm aware of that. But there's some people that will honor you walking in on a hot day in Lancaster, California, and saying, man, are you guys doing any hiring? I'm sweating bullets out here. You know what? A guy just quit. Yeah. Come on, a guy just quit. Yeah. Walk in at the right time, you get a job. But nobody wants to work hard. Yeah. I went to a church the other day to preach. This young brother, 23 years old, big cat. And I go, hey brother, what's going on, man? Did you find a job yet? Because the last time I preached, he wasn't working. I told him this in front of everybody. If you make a guarantee and a promise to God that the first check you get, you'll give to him, he'll give you a job quick. You ain't got nothing now anyhow. Why are you thinking? Can I give that up? You ain't got nothing anyhow. You're so broke you can't even change your mind. What's wrong with you? Well, and I go back a, a couple of weeks later to preach again. He's out, did you find work? And he goes, no. And this is what he tells me. I go, well, what is it that you'd like to do so I can pray for you? Well, what, what, were, what was your last job? Oh, I was working in a warehouse, you know, uh, throwing loading trucks, throwing boxes. And he goes, he's 23 now. <sighs> but I'm tired, of, I'm tired of throwing boxes. I'm tired of working hard. <laughs> I said, you know, in my mind, I thought, Lord, can I please backslide for about two minutes? <laughs> All I want to do is choke him till my hands touch and I'll let him go. But my God, how can you be so lazy to have the audacity to say, I, I don't want to work hard. But you want to make fat money. Huh? You, and you go, what's wrong with you? You want to get a job and you get hired as a CEO and president of the company? How about working your way up in the company? My son just got a new job working for a company called Cisco. They're working 14 to 16 hours a day. He called me last night. They pops, I go, what's up? You know, he goes, the job's tough. I said, welcome to the real world, homeboy. <laughs> hmm? I go, hey, every job I ever had, I didn't like. But I got a revelation for you, mijo. It's called work, not fun. <laughs> it's not Disneyland. Magic Mountain, come on now. Not Sperry Farm. It's called work, Bato. It's work. It's that dirty four letter word. That's why new Christians don't read the book of Job because they think it means job. They're so lazy. You gotta work and you say amen. Work for what you want. You, you want nice stuff? 
you gotta work. Yes. Let me just give it to you. Come on now. What's wrong with you? You want good stuff, you're gonna have to work for it. God will bless you, can you say amen? But you got to work. Come on now. I get a kick out of guys, their churches are, aren't growing. This one is praise God. Their churches aren't growing. You know, I know why they're not growing. Because every time I call the house to say hello to book a meeting, the wife will say, oh, let me get him. He's watching TV. He's asleep right now. Can I take a message? Then when you go preach, I don't know why we're not growing. Now you call the guy who's having a rival. Hey, can I talk to pastor? He's not here. He's on an outreach. He's not here. He's visiting someone in the hospital. He's not here. He's helping somebody. He's not here. He's doing something. He's not here. He's working. He's not here. He's working. He's the one that's having the move of God. Because he's working. The vision doesn't work itself. You got to work the vision. Can you say amen? Come on. God didn't tell Noah, build the ark. But if you pray hard enough, Nicole, just close your eyes. The ark is going to go. It's going to appear. No, you know what he said? You're going to go get the wood. You're going to go with this. You're going to get other materials. And it's going to take you 120 years to do it all. So get the step in. Huh? Somehow we think that, you know, oh, you know, I know God's going to help me. Yeah, he's going to help you. But you got to move. You got to move, can you say amen? How many know your Bible ain't going to read itself? Come on now. Do you know this is the number one seller in the world today? It has been translated in more languages than any other language in the world. Did you know that this is the, the least read book in the world too? People don't read it. They don't read it. They just wonder why they're, they're not getting the victory. Huh? It, it amazes me how everybody wants everything given to them. Are you hearing me today? Look man, I'm a giver. And if I meet you for the first time, and then let's go eat, I'm going to buy. Come on now. I want to show you that I'm blessed and I'm a liberal man. Yes. But the next time, if I don't see you reach for your wallet, homeboy, this party's over. Yes. Yes. Hello. I ain't GR. Come on now. Gangster indeed. Come on now. I ain't Wick. Women in chocolates. I ain't your ABT card either. Come on now. Eating better today but starving tomorrow. No. No. I buy, you buy. I buy, you buy. I buy, you I buy, you fly. That's just the way it goes. Come on now. And quit faking like you got money, like Darnell with that empty wallet. Pre reaching for something, you know ain't nothing in there. No, oh, I got it. Yeah, you do got it. Because it's just the world of working. Come on now. It's a world of giving, can you say that? Proverbs 6, 4 says, Give not sleep to thine eyes, nor slumber to thine eyelids. Deliver thyself as a roll from the hand of the hunter, and as a bird from the hand of the fowler. Go to the ant, sluggard. Consider her ways and be wise, which having no guide, overseer, or ruler, provideth her meat in the summer, and gathereth food in the harvest. How long wilt thou sleep, O sluggard? When wilt thou arise out of thy sleep? Get a little sleep and a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to sleep. So shall thy poverty come as one that travaileth, and as they want as an armed man, or as one who gets robbed on a vacation, far from home and stranded with nothing. Why? Because you don't want to work. You know, I, don't, I, don't, I just don't understand people, especially Christians who are saved and still on welfare. Now, I can understand it, man, if you, you know, you, you're disabled. God bless you, amen. But you better be tithing off that jet, honey. Uh, but, you know, like my, my brother, he just retired early, you know. He retired early. He retired at 61, not by choice. They laid him off after 24 years on the job. And I said, don't worry, God's going to bless you. Well, a girl in the church comes and gives all the paperwork for him. He's getting blessed, getting double the money. Come on now. And she said, why don't you apply for, uh, you know, for an EBT card and, and, you know, for money, for food? He's like, isn't that like wrong? She says, no, you, they took it out of your check for all your years. It's your money. They're giving it back. Oh, okay. He called those, hey, bro, come on now. And you realize he worked all his life. And he says, hey, bro, come on like a child. Check it out. They gave him an EBT card. Come on, like he stole something. 
I came in need the tea car. I didn't know they took it to Kentucky Fried Chicken. And I don't know because I've never done it. I saw I go, uh, do you guys take EBT? They go, yeah. Oh, well, thank you, Jesus. So I tell Nico, yeah, man, you know, pray for your deal, man. God's blessing him. And I go, you got EBT? And he goes, EBT? Isn't that for poor people? And I said, no. It was never designed for what? It was designed for people that are between jobs. Between jobs. Not people that don't want a job. But between jobs, to get you to the next job, then you cut it off. But because this nation is so wicked and so evil, they never get a job. Then they stay on welfare. And then we have second and third generation welfare kids. Come on now. Now they do it, you know, through, through, through DBT or whatever. They do. I don't know how it's really done because I'm not on it. But I had a buddy who was a mailman. He would tell me, I hate your street. The street. That's what laughing back there. Why do you hate my street? Because on the first, the kids are all dirty, full of mocos. Come on now. You can see the, fl the, fl the fleas jumping off their hair. On the first, they're all cleaned up in a suit. At five years old saying, where's my check? Where's my check? Don't get quiet now. See, you don't want to be a welfare person. You want to be a working person. You want to be a worker and you say amen. You want to be like the sluggard. Come on. Ah, oh, but I love to sleep. I have to have my beauty sleep. I've seen you. In order for you to look better, you gotta go into a full-blown coma. Because you're ugly. Come on now. Well, you're so ugly, it's, you're oogly. They changed the word just for you. There's a story of a mom who goes, gets up and goes to work at 5 in the morning. Comes home at 5. And she goes into the bedroom and her son is still asleep. 23 years old. She worked 12 hours. Comes home and he's crashed out. Snoring, farting, and burping. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta be gifted to do all them three at the same time too, so you know. And the mom says, Aren't you ashamed, Miko? Aren't you ashamed of being asleep after I'm a woman? I'm providing for you. You should be taking care of me. I'm your mama. Aren't you ashamed? You know what he said? I'm ashamed, Mom. But I'm still too lazy to get up. <laughs> I'm ashamed, but I'm still too lazy to get up. It'll destroy your life. Can you say that? You will live. Listen to me. Even if you're saved and you're lazy, you'll live in a world called Sunday. Hmm? The land called I wish. The land of if I only. The land of just getting by. The land of just barely enough. I don't know about you, but I want to live in the land full of milk and honey. Yeah. Oh yeah. I want the blessings of God. And if it's milk and honey, you might as well throw in some ribs and make it barbecue honey ribs. God has made a way. For you to have anything you want in life. Can you say amen? Yeah. Anything you want in life. All you got to do is work. Can you say amen? Yeah. You got to work. You got to work. Yeah. You got to work. Come on now. Yeah. Look, I drove a truck for 30 years. Something like that. Tractor trailer. Every job was 12 hours by the grace of God. I go and hire me. Come on now. And they say, okay, you start Monday. Okay. Five to five. Next job you start Monday. Six to six. Next job you start Monday. Four to four. 60 hours a week, 20 hours a week, time and a half. Thank you, Jesus. I worked. I preached last night. I preached this morning. When I leave here, I want to go preach to Ron Simpkins in Victorville. Come on now. Spend the night. Preach tomorrow night again for Pastor Ron. Drive to L.A. Get home around midnight. Get up around 4 in the morning. Leave at 6 to go preach for Rick Merrick in San Diego. 
Come on now. I'm 59 years old. I ain't tired. I'll sleep when I get to heaven. Maybe nobody ever told you, but the kingdom of God has always been run by tired men and women. Sure, we're tired, but we've got to do what we got to do. There's no way for buts about it, can you say amen? You know, your pastor is such an amazing testimony to me. I see him with that leg replacement, a knee replacement. Come on now. Looking like the bionic man already. <laughs> but yet I see him, you know, outreaching. Come on now. I see him always about the Father's business. Ain't nobody can call him lazy. I said nobody can call him lazy. He will not let anything stop him. He can make all the excuses in the world. Come on now. Legitimately. Come on. And even Adam was, oh. My neck and my back. No, you know what he says? I'm all right. I'm hurt, but I'm all right. Come on. I'm here. Let's just go. Let's just go. Quit talking about it. Let's just go. Huh? I go, man. That's a man of God. That's a man of God. Come on now. And you know what he's producing? Men just like him. Men, you're going to sprain your finger or something. Oh, Pastor, I can't go to church. I hurt my finger. <laughs> what? I got a brand new knee. Come on now. Get butt to church. What's wrong with you? You sprain your finger. Come here so I can break it for you. <laughs> excuses, excuses. Come on now. What you can become depends on what you can overcome. You know, you look at uh, Gideon. When God tells him, I'm going to use you to deliver my people. You know what he says? And he said unto him, O oh my Lord, wherewith shall I save Israel? Behold, my family is poor in Manasseh, and I am the least in my father's house. I, I can't, come on, here we go again. I, I can't do that. I can't do that. Oh, man, I tell you, I, I really, honest to God, I wish I could just hit people sometimes so hard in the face. <laughs> I can't do that. You know, you, let me give you something to cry about, huh? I mean, I was raised by my dad old school. Seven boys, no girls. And if you cried for nothing, you got issues, my friend. He says, why are you crying? Let me give you something to cry about. Come on. He'd give you something to cry about. You never cried for nothing around my dad. And my mom was worse. My mom was ghetto, man. She was worse. I don't know how many brooms she broke on her butts and mops. Plunger. She hit us with whatever she could use. And she got us up every Saturday morning. She said, I ain't got no girls, so you're going to clean the house. You're going to do the kitchen. You're going to do the bathroom. You're going to mop. You're going to sweep. You're going to do the yard. Please tell me you don't want to do it. I'm begging you to tell me you don't look at me. So I can hit you. And then you wait till your daddy gets home. I'm going to tell him you don't want to do nothing. Come on now. See, that's what we need sometimes. See, we get back to that place of old school where you make people do stuff. Come on now. I don't do nothing in my house. Just study and pray. Come on now. Everybody else does everything. When I go to the market, hello somebody. I honk. Beep, beep. It's in the car. Go get it. Put it away. And the first time you tell me you don't want to get it, I'm not mad. I'll never go to the market again. You can all starve. <laughs> I'll eat out every day. I don't care. This is the way it's done, can you say amen? I've done my time. Come on now. It's your turn. And then we get mad when they ask us to do stuff. Well, I know I haven't been doing all the time. I tell you what then, you don't want to clean? No. You don't want to help? No. Cool. Get your stuff. Split. <laughs> Split. <laughs> My son, who I just told you, got a job. When he got out of high school, I got him a job with a friend of mine in Sully Windshields. And one day, I had a bill come in and it was 100 bucks, so I told him, you will give me 100 bucks starting this week, every Friday when you get paid. My wife comes home and says, what'd you do to rob you? I go, what are you talking about? He's on the computer crying. I go, crying? 
I go, what are you crying about? I don't have a hundred dollars, Dad. <laughs> you ain't got a hundred dollars. Oh, come on now. <laughs> I said, you don't have to cry anymore. Don't cry. Why are you crying? Don't cry. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to cry anymore. Mijo, back your truck up. I'm going to load it for you. And you're going to split. <laughs> You don't have to cry. But if you want to cry, that's fine. But you're leaving anyway. You can leave crying. <laughs> Pay or go. Yes. I had a neighbor who lived down the street. He took a liking to my son. My son moves in with him. You know, then about three days later, he comes in and I see him in my kitchen. You ain't hearing me. My kitchen. <laughs> My food goes. And I said, what are you doing? Huh? I go, what are you doing? Uh, no, 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 uh. <laughs> this ain't your house no more. You go see what Jesse has in the fridge. This is my house. You pay there, you eat there. Get out. Oh, come on, Dad. Oh, no, come on, nothing. Get out. This dick, this is a joke. Get out. So he leaves. And then I find out he's paying $400 a month rent. I said, Mijo, where'd you go to school? Did you fail math? <laughs> How is four less than one? Well, it's the whole principle of the thing that I go, cool. God bless you. Well, about three months go by. Calls me up and says, hey, Dad, they stole my car. I go, why are you calling me? Oh, Dad, I go, no, why are you calling me? Come on, Dad, I go, you don't understand, son. Let me help you understand. To you, I may just be your dad, but I'm not just your dad. I'm a man of God, my friend. And I don't even care if you believe that or not. But you don't come against me and expect my blessings. When you left, your grace stayed in my house. Your mercy stayed in my house. I don't owe you jack. You're on your own. He calls me back about 20 minutes later. Dad, pray for me. I just wrecked the van. I think I totaled it. I go, good for you. But again, he goes, why are you calling me? Come on, Dad, stop. I go, I got to go. And I was driving at that time, and I was running Vegas, hauling carpeting. And I come back and I step a couple hours and I get up and he's sleeping on my couch and I go, what are you doing? Uh, I just got out of jail. Go, jail? For being ugly? No. He <laughs> said, Dad, the neighbor's got AIDS and I guess he's, he's mixed up his medication and, and he said I was shooting at his window with a BB gun and the cops came and they, they broke in my house and they cuffed me and took me to jail, threw me in a drunk tank. I was in there eight hours. I go, okay, good for you. I said, well, it's time to come home. Go get your stuff and come back. And uh, it's enough already. you suffered enough. Go get your stuff and come back. And uh, oh, by the way, go to the bank before you come back because now the rent's five. Yeah. Oh, you ain't hearing me. Now the rent is five. I can't pay five. Yeah. Then go back. I'll go to the bank. <laughs> He had to learn. He had to learn, can you say amen? He had to learn that nothing is free. Especially prayer. Come on now. Look, man, I serve God. I pay a price to serve God. And the blessing they roll off me, the trickling on your life, my friend. Come on now. And if you don't want that in your life, that's fine. Don't you come trying to disrespect me now. You know, in 1 Samuel, you find the story of David. I know Pastor Merrick talked about it. But the Bible says, and Samuel said unto Jesse, you know, he tells him to go. The king's going to come out of Jesse's loins. And Samuel said unto Jesse, are, are all the children here? And he said, there remaineth one, the youngest, and behold, he's with the sheep. And Samuel said, they go fetch him. We're not going to do anything until you get back. Please hear me. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And yet, sometimes in life, people won't believe in you. And in this case, what a shame that his own dad didn't believe in him. His own dad doesn't believe in him. 
And he says, well, I, these are all my kids, but I had one, but he's, he's up there with the sheep. He smells and everything. You don't want him. No, the Lord said, I need everybody here. And I'm going to sit. We're not going to do nothing until you bring him. And when he brings them, what happens? He says, that's the next king. That's the next king. And you know what happens? As you read the story, the Bible says he goes to, to check on his brothers. And Goliath is talking smack. And he says, who is this clown, man? Why are you guys? Somebody shut this guy out. Come on now. And nobody's doing nothing. And who, who opens their mouth first? His oldest brother. He says, shut up, dude. You, just, you don't even know how to fight. You just came to see a fight. Go home and you stink anyhow. Huh? Get out of here. David says, you know what? I'll lay it with you. I don't want to talk to you. He asks the army what's going on. They tell him to shut up too. Finally, someone gets with it. There's someone crazy enough to fight Goliath. They pull him into the king's office. The king says, are you kidding me? You're nothing but a little kid. He says, no. You don't understand. I'm a warrior. I'm a warrior. Okay? Because I take care of my dad's sheep. And one time a lion came. And he tried to take the sheep. And I, I killed that lion. Bear came a couple of days later. I, I punked him too. Come on now. You know why? I know the lions are dangerous and I know bears are dangerous. But ain't no way I was going to answer to my dad. Just like me and my brothers. My dad was hardcore. Come on now. Seven boys. If one did something wrong, you're not just getting hit. All seven get in line. Like the three students. Everybody got smacked down. So we learned to cover each other's back, can you say amen? And here's David, nobody believes in him. And even when he goes to fight Goliath, Goliath says, are you kidding me? Am I a dog that you come with rocks? I'm gonna kill you. David laughed in his face. He said, you clown, I'm gonna kill you today. And after I kill you, I'm gonna punk you, I'm gonna cut your own head off, and I don't even have a sword. But I'm gonna take your own sword that you got, and I'm gonna cut your own head off, because you ain't nothing but a punk, come on now. Are you hearing me? Yeah. See, David didn't allow what everyone said because, you know, when you start to write.